Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, we've got a This Year in Perfume, and it's going to be on the year 2008. We're slowly getting towards the future, and um, one of my fears is becoming realized. I don't have a ton of fragrances to show you in 2008. There is a little bit of a drop-off, but the ones that I have, I think, are absolutely amazing. So I don't have 20 fragrances or anything to show you. A decent size. But uh, as we get more and more into the future, you're probably going to see the numbers kind of dwindle as these years go by. But before we get into the video, uh, I want to thank everyone who joined my kind of sporadic live stream yesterday. Uh, I know Russian Adam was supposed to join me. He wasn't feeling well. Stuff happens, you know. Um, he's still going to plan on coming on the channel to do a live stream with us, but it might be tomorrow uh, you know, Saturday, who knows the exact day, but either way, it is going to happen, it's just once he gets to feeling better, but to everyone who joined and participated, it was really neat to see 30 to 40 people consistently in a stream that I just kind of threw up randomly. Now, maybe they were expecting to see Russian Adam and not me, but, uh, it ended up being a two-hour stream, so again, thank you to everyone who participated, and, um, you know, I, I know I don't ask for uh, super chats or anything like that, but to those of you who did give in a super chat, it is very much appreciated. Again, it's not why I'm doing this channel, but don't think I don't appreciate uh, the gestures when stuff like that does happen. Um, but uh, again, completely unnecessary, but for those of you who went above and beyond, thank you, I see you. Uh, okay, so let's get on with the video. Let's do scent of the day like we always do, and then we're going to jump into fragrances from 2008. Now for me, 2008 was a traumatic year because, you know, my job is in the financial industry. I was new uh, and, you know, 2008 just kind of walloped me. When you don't have experience um, and, you know, and you're young and starting out and all this stuff, um, when you hit these kind of bumpy, turbulent times in the finance world, you don't have the, you know, reference point to draw off of. You don't have the you know, times that you've lived through it, you've seen it do this or that, and so you're kind of just, everything is new and coming at you all at once. And 2008 was all about the financial crisis, the housing bubble that burst in 2007, and then, of course, everything that happened financially with the bankruptcies of Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, and, you know, all that stuff just really pushed the financial market to the brink. Um, and so it was a very turbulent time, especially in, in my life, because we were swamped um, you know, as far as work overload was just brutal, but it was also a, a time of great learning for me. So it was kind of one of those, you know, ages, years, uh, really couple years, the financial crisis, that time frame, 2007 to 2009 was, um, kind of trial by fire for me, which is fine. You know, I, I look back on it now and think, what an experience it was to be able to live through that and, you know, have those conversations today. But whenever, um, um, whenever most people look back at that period, that's what they're going to think about. They're going to think about, um, you know, the financial crisis. They're going to think about uh, Obama getting elected. They're going to think about stuff like that. So um, let's talk about perfume. Um, First, we're going to do scent of the day, and this is actually the first time I've given this a full wear, and it's called Amouage Opus 11. Now, these old Opus bottles from the library collection are going away. They're no more. Uh, they're going to put all of the Opus library collection in the random men-looking Amouage bottles. I'll show you one coming up here very soon. I'll show you two, actually, in this video. Um, and this is a winter fragrance that I'm wearing in summer. I don't care. I wore Pavarotti just yesterday, and the Russian leather note really did come through. That's something Jonathan mentioned, that when you wear fragrances off-season, you tend to pick up different, you know, bits and pieces, and, um, you know, you tend to notice things in the fragrance that you wouldn't notice if you only wore it in the winter. And so, Opus 11 is basically this woody, leathery, uh, smoky fragrance, okay? It has oud, it has oud, but it's it smells like it's the generic designer oud that you get in everything else. Um, it doesn't smell like Amouage is using real oud. They're probably not, 
Um, if there is a drop of oud in there, you know, don't sue me, Amwaj. If you say it's real oud, it's real oud. But to me, this smells like a synthetic type oud, which is fine. I understand, you know, not everything's going to be Ensar or Russian Adam or, you know, Bortnikov. I understand that, okay? What's interesting about this fragrance, though, is it is a Pierre Negrin creation. And Pierre Negrin created Interlude Man, the Blue Beast, uh, which is known for that insane oregano top. Okay, so it's got that oregano top, and then it goes into those resins, the Apopanax, and all the other crazy stuff in there, myrrh, oud. Um, this one has what's called marjoram in the opening. Okay, and marjoram is sometimes... Um, you know, in the same family as oregano. So it does smell different, but there is a passing resemblance between marjoram and oregano. And so it's interesting that he ended up doing this, and it's in a blue bottle, um, for whatever that's worth. So it's oud in the middle, marjoram in the top, and the base is styrax and uh, a synthetic molecule called wood leather, copyrighted. What, whoever owns that, I don't know. Whoever owns that captive molecule, I don't know. Um, and it looks like it's a simple perfume. And it kind of is a simple perfume. Uh, it doesn't do a whole amount of changing, but there are these little micro, there's these little microcosms of change in the perfume when you wear it. So when you first spray, you know, it's almost like you get this smoky haze in front. This, you know, almost like if you're burning real oud wood chips and you get that smoke rising and it kind of just obscures your view. That's what the fragrance feels like. And that marjoram note will remind you a little bit of the oregano in Interlude Man, but in a different way, you know, and in, in it's something different. And, you know, the fragrance that I would compare it most to, okay, and we talked a little bit about this on the live stream. Talked a little bit about this on the live stream yesterday, but since now it's my scent of the day, we'll talk about it again. It's most closely related to Gucci Guilty Absolute. Somebody made a joke on one of the, I can't remember if it was Base Notes or Fragrantica or what, but they said, uh, this is Gucci Guilty Absolute Intense. And they're kind of, you know, tongue-in-cheek joking and right at the same time. Because this kind of uses more vetiver. It has more of that Band-Aid smell, people say, and that's true. Um, this is even smokier. Uh, and it doesn't go into the vetiver dry down that you get in Gucci Guilty Absolute. You know, vetiver and leather is what you get here. Le wood leather which may remind you of the leather vetiver combo in Gucci Guilty Absolute, but it's something different. It's like an Amouage Middle Eastern take with that smoky oud. The oud here feels very smoky to me, whether it's the resinous Styrax or what, I don't know. But, you know, it's 103 degrees out in Texas today, and I'm wearing am an Amouage, but, uh, you know, that's what happens when you just kind of go your own way. And I'm enjoying it, so whatever, you know. Uh, and I'm working from home, so I don't have to appease anyone in an office. I can wear whatever I want. Okay, next fragrance is going to be a Guerlain, and this is 2008. This is actually uh, a fragrance that was in the La Art and Matier collection. I don't know what they call it, but uh, it's called Lame Dune Eros. I believe it translates to the soul of a hero, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, this is a decant, and I will, I'm going to give this, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a comparison video for you guys with Coriolan, because um, this is Coriolan, and Lame Dune Eros from 2008 is uh, basically the exact same fragrance, repackaged and marked up to $350 instead of the $80 or $70 that this sold for back in the day. And I'll tell you what, um... You know, this fragrance is underrated. This is a good fragrance. People don't talk about it very much, but I really like um, Coriolan. I have two bottles of this, so I wouldn't buy a full bottle of this. But, you know, when I when I bought this long ago, uh, I didn't realize it was the exact same fragrance. I, I only realized it afterwards. And so, 
It's this spicy green scent um, with one of the biggest um, sage fennel like smell I've ever smelled. It has this um, freshness at the top, uh, but not in this disgusting white flower way. Like if you don't like white florals, sometimes orange blossom will put you off, right? The, the um, neroli, and it's not orange blossom, it's lemon blossom in the top of this. And that's what I think kind of makes it different and interesting. But then there's juniper, ylang ylang, pepper, vetiver, patchouli, benzoin, and immortelle. There's actually an immortelle note in the base of this. If you're on an immortelle hunt, you need um, lamb dune arrows or coriolan, whichever you can find. Uh, I think they're both the exact same note tree. But um, this fragrance, apparently, rumor is, Jean-Paul Guerlain started working on it at the exact same time he started working on Darby. And it just got released in the 90s. It was a, it's a great fragrance, but it was at the wrong time is all. 2008 was the wrong time for this. And the late 90s was the wrong time for this. They're the same fragrance, just repackaged, marked up by Guerlain. Um, you know, we were talking, Rich and I were just kind of kicking the shit earlier today. We were talking and um, I said, you know... There's one thing about a house I don't like. Like, for example, you know, you could name uh, one thing from a house you don't like. With Chanel, I don't like how they attack people who try to sell their perfumes in the secondary market. I don't like that. Um, it's their fragrance. It's their perfume. They bought it. You know, if they want to sell it for whatever amount they want to sell it for, I don't like that Chanel is... It makes them feel... It makes them seem touchy and sensitive, you know, that they go after people who are just selling their fragrance on eBay or something. You know, I, I understand trying to protect the brand, but that's overkill. With Guerlain, I don't like how they repackage things and then sell it at a, at a, in a different name and almost try to trick people into buying the same fragrance again or at a higher price. They did it with Lame Dune Eros. They did it with, um, they did it with Sange du Bois de Et and Bois Mysterio. This is the exact same perfume they discontinue this, and they put it in this bottle, and, you know, it's, I, I just don't, I don't like that. That bothers me about Guerlain. Um, but, um, you know, that's, that's just the way it goes sometimes, but you have to know that information, otherwise you'll do what I did. You bought, you'll buy a decant of a fragrance that you already have a full bottle of, or whatever it is. Okay, um, final decant here is going to be... Lyric Woman by Amouage. So I don't have a full bottle of this one. This is almost like the Amouage that got away, if you will. Okay, so this is Amouage Lyric Woman. There you go. And I love Amouage's samples. The sprayer on these samples, by the way, is better than some full bottles I have. It comes with a cap. You know, this is what a proper niche expensive house sample should look like. And um, Lyric Woman is on my full to buy list. And I'll do a, a full review of it very soon or an early impression, whatever you want to call it. Um, it is more masculine and more animalic than Lyric Man. Lyric Man is much cleaner. It has that lime uh, Angelica. This also has... Um, Angelica and Rose, just like Lyric Man, but it's more of that dirty animalic florals, almost like you're smelling an 80s fragrance, you know, like you're smelling something from um, the 80s, like Akitos or Tenere, but in a spicy floral amouage way. Uh, there is a little bit of that amouage frankincense in the base, but... Um, this is full bottle worthy for me, and I'm, I'm looking for a bottle, but it's turning out to be pretty hard to find. And then in 2008, they released, uh, of course, whenever Amouage did a release back in the day, they always did two, um, a, a man and a woman's version. So this is Lyric Man from 2008, and uh, this is the one that I did find a full bottle of. I'm still looking for the full bottle of the women's version, but it's a, it's also a spicy floral fragrance, but instead of bergamot in the top, I think there might be a little bit of bergamot in the top, but what you'll mostly get is lime. So you get this lime 
ginger and angelica, which makes it very fresh, okay? Extremely fresh smelling. And rose. And there is a little bit of that Middle Eastern saffron in here, but it's mostly about the lime, angelica, and rose. And in the dry down, in, in the base, you get a little bit of that uh, Middle Eastern amouage frankincense, but not much. It's not about that. It's more about the musk and the pine. There's a green pine note in the base, which is absolutely insane. So you get this green, fresh lime rose, and it will throw you off at first. You know, when, when I first uh, got to know this fragrance, I didn't like it. In fact, I gave the sample to my mother because I thought, this is not what a man should smell like. I can't wear this. It's way too feminine. And then as my nose progressed, I revisited it and came back to it and went, wow, I needed a bottle and I got one. Now I'm looking for a bottle of the women's version. But 2008, um, Danielle Vicentine is the perfumer for Lyric uh, Man. And Danielle Moriel is the perfumer for Lyric Woman. And of course, for... Uh, Lame Dune Eros, uh, it's Jean-Paul Guerlain. Okay, so now we're going to go to um, another Middle Eastern house that I think tried to kind of ride the coattails of Amouage. Uh, it's a house from uh, a small uh, Gulf nation called Bahrain, and the, the fragrance uh, house is called Chic Shake. And this is number 70. So this is Chic Shake number 70. You can see they tried to do the jewel on the top, kind of like Amouage does the jewel in the cap right here. Um, and they uh, tried to sell it for an exorbitant amount of money. You know, all, it's, it's considered to be like a niche house crafted in Bahrain. Uh, there's a lot of detailing on the cap. You can see they spent a lot of time. Um, this actually says uh, Desert Prince. Designer Chic Shake Arabia Desert Prince. Oh, Passion of Desert Prince. Okay, either way. Uh, Chic Shake number 70. I don't know who the perfumer is, but I can tell you that... Um, it's a woody floral type fragrance that will remind you of Creed's Spice and Woods. I actually prefer this to Spice and Woods, to be honest with you. Um, it has this clary sage, um, bergamot, orange, lemon, jasmine, lily of the valley. There is a little bit of a floral touch to it, but it's mostly about the woods and the base, the sandalwood and cedar, and there's a huge musk note in here. And musk sandalwood, cedar, vetiver. It's a good fragrance. If you had to wear, um, if you had to wear, you know, a fragrance in this style, I would actually wear this over Creed Spice and Wood. They're very similar to my nose, extremely similar. This one just, I get a little bit more pleasure and enjoyment out of. You know, I paid, I don't know what I paid, 130 or something for this. I think retail's 250, something like that. Um, Creed Spice and Wood retails for 800 or something, something obscene, you know? Um, and so I, I maybe while I'm wearing Spice and Wood, I'm just constantly thinking that there's no way in hell it's worth this price. Even though it's an okay fragrance, I'd rather just wear Royal Oud, to be honest with you. Uh, or, Sh or Chic Shake. That came out in 2008. They only put out, um... A couple fragrances. They came out with a few fragrances and then they kind of stopped. It was like they realized it wasn't catching on and they weren't going to be Amouage and they just stopped. They just stopped putting out fragrances. Um, I think both of their fragrances came out in 2007 and 2013 and I think that's pretty much it. They came out with another one in 2013 but I think it's even worse than this one. So yeah, I mean this is the only one from the house I would I would even consider if you wanted maybe a little cheaper alternative than um, Spice and Wood, you could go for something like this. But, you know, it you have to really like this style, this woody floral musk kind of thing. It's not my favorite. It's not bad. It's just not my favorite. Okay, now we're going to go to one I almost never talk about on the channel. 
because it's kind of a sweet fragrance. It's sweet, it's fruity. It's not really my thing. It's kind of the thing I make fun of all the time, but I do enjoy this sometimes. I'll wear it to bed. I will, I'll almost never give it a full wear, although maybe I will give it a full wear one day and talk about it. It's discontinued too, but it's a Paco Rabanne fragrance called Ultra Red Man. And this is actually the sprayer. So it looks like a staple gun, you know, and it sprays out of here. It's um, praline, blood orange, praline, okay? Blood orange, tonka bean, tonka and praline already. We're starting off on the wrong foot. With vanilla and patchouli and blood orange. Daphne Bugie is the perfumer. Um... 2008 and the reason I bought this is it's discontinued. I got a hundred mils for a good price and It's supposed to be similar to Terry Mugler's ultra zest. I think the orange bottle, which I can't find at a good price so um, I decided to buy that one instead and it, For a sweet fragrance. It's about as good as you're gonna do a sweet designer fragrance without making it disgusting Let's put it that way. It's nothing special if you can get it for 20 or 30 bucks and you like that style, go for it. I've kind of outgrown this style, but I mean, if I ever want to smell like a 20 year old, I, you know, I have it. Um, but it's just, it's, it's, I don't want to, and I, it almost sounds like I'm being a snob, like, oh, I've outgrown that. But it's just, my nose has changed as you go along in this journey. And it's just, it's hard to wear. If I wore that all day, I think it would get to me. Okay, now here's one I could wear all day that I really like. It's an Antoine Lee creation for the house of Eldo, a tat libre de orange, and it's called Tom of Finland. So Parfumo shows 2008. I think Base Notes or maybe even Fragrantica shows 2007. I'm going off of Parfumo for all of these vi videos, so I'm maintaining that, you know, um, that consistency. But this is like an aldehydic lemon meringue leather if that makes sense i know it sounds insane an aldehydic lemon meringue leather so imagine you had this lemon meringue pie um, with leather birch leaf pine pepper vanilla ambergris and suede so yes it kind of is a um imagine you took like a lemon meringue pie and instead of putting it in pie crust, that inside of the lemon meringue pie, you put it in a, you know, like um, like you cut open a football and flattened out the leather and put it in there and then sewn it back up and then made it suede uh, and, and added some pine, you know, toppings on top. That's basically what you get. But for some reason it works. It's, it's completely strange. And, but Tom of Finland is kind of a quirky, strange brand, um, to say the least. Go watch their advertisements if you want to. Just make sure you're not at work when you watch them. Um, but yes, it's, um, it's a fragrance I'm very glad to have. The new ones are completely clear. Like, the juice is clear. It's not, um, you know, it's not golden orange like mine. So I'm glad I have a vintage, but, um... As a leather lover, I mean, I think this is a must. And there's a note of saffron in here, too, I should mention. Saffron is a captive molecule of one of the big oil houses that's supposed to smell like a version of saffron. And it's used here to perfection. Saffron, leather, aldehydic, lemon, uh, pine, and suede. Crazy fragrance, but I love it. Uh, and, and I love Antoine Lee. I think he's a fantastic perfumer. Okay, now I've got a full decant of this and I have this little 15 ml bottle, but this is so good. I would even right now, um, I would buy a full bottle of this. This is Histoise de Parfum, uh, 1740. And 1740, so Histoise de Parfum sells these little 15 ml bottles. And I love these little things. I wish more brands did these 15 mil bottles because, you know, I'm using the other decant and then I'll start to use this. But sometimes you don't need 100 mils, you know, like this is perfect. And, oh, this is so good. This is a spicy leather. This is one of my favorite Immortel fragrances. Um, if you want an Immortel fragrance, niche Immortel with a heavy, 
strong uh, leather note uh, and an amazing use of Divana. I have never seen a perfumer use Divana better than this who's not named Bertrand Duchafort. Bertrand Duchafort is the king of Divana and incense. And um, this owner of this brand, Gerald uh, Gisalain, and I think that he had a he had um, a perfumer help him with this one. I think he's created most of the, or he's the creative director for the brand. Sylvie Jordet is who they list her as the pure perfumer. I don't know who that is, but she did an amazing job with this one. Uh, spicy with the cardamom and coriander, and there's this patchouli labdanum mixture. Uh, but it's all about the birch, the leather, the immortel. Um, it's just fantastic. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of this fragrance. I think it's the best from the house, like from the entire house. Rare Fidelis is probably second for me. That's a Julian Raskinet. He also did the moon. Um, but 1740 is stunning. Okay, last two. Again, I told you this wasn't going to be a long one. One of my favorite incense fragrances of all time. This is Incense Extreme by Andy Tower. Now, I know this doesn't look like an Andy Tower bottle, but uh, this is what his old bottles look like before he switched to um, before he switched to this. This is the old Andy Tower bottles. And Andy Tower is probably one of the best true niche perfumers who made himself, made his brand. Uh, there is a little bit of that Towerade in here. So like if you smell um, Lone Star Memories, right? And you, you get that Towerade in the base that he has created for himself. And, and it does run through his fragrances, kind of like the Guerlainade. He's got the tower rod, if you will. And you get a little bit of that in Incense Extreme. But what I like about it the best is it does the best job of straddling the line with incense fragrances because incense fragrances basically have a problem. If they're all natural, like Rich Mitch was testing Bois d'Ensance yesterday and he was telling me, mate, it's beautiful, but it lasted 45 minutes on my skin. And I said, I know. Uh, that's the trade-off with something that smells really natural as an incense fragrance. The perfumers can't make it last forever. But if they make it last longer, it starts to smell. It's like, here's the middle, right? Over here is short time, you know, term. Doesn't last as long, but it smells more natural. The more they away they get from the more natural, more and more over here, right? The, the more ingredients they add to make it last on your skin, and extend the longevity, the less natural it smells, the less like natural incense it smells like. This walks the line beautifully between natural smelling incense and lasting a long time. And then to top it off, on top of the Tower Odd DNA, which who knows what it is, right? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Andy Tower used real ambergris. But I also wouldn't be surprised if it came out that it wasn't real ambergris. It was his creation of ambroxin and something else. Uh, but whatever it is, it's beautiful. And there's also a note of iris in here. And the iris just sets this off. It's the perfect, for me, for me personally, it's the perfect incense scent. If I want a pure smoky incense, this is probably my, my favorite. Um, incense Extreme. Uh, wow, amazing. Okay, speaking of incense, the final fragrance. My favorite from 2008, probably my favorite from Emouage. Um, just the best uh, Bertrand du Chafour. This and Chiffre Palatine are the two that would, you know, go head to head for me. Um, this is Jubilation 25 by Emouage. Um, the Gift of Kings. I mean, what can you say about Amouage, Jubilation 25? The only thing I've heard bad people say bad about it is, oh, it has a, t it has a big slug of um, Isoe Super in it or whatever, Ambroxan. I don't care. I honestly don't care about that. I don't care if the whole damn thing is Isoe Super. The way he made this smell with the blackberry, the oud, the frankincense, the honey, the honey in this is, oh. The honey is absolutely stunning. 
Um, there is an Immortel note in here too, but it's kind of in the background. Um, Myrrh, Apopanax, Oud. I mean, it's 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 just an amazing creation. Look at the dent that I put in the bottle. Um, this is special juice. I've never smelled the new stuff. I hear people complain it's been reformulated and on and on and on. I don't know, but, um, and this is a magnetic cap, but it is the older version where the name is written on the collar and there's no name written on the front and there's no name written on the side either. I mentioned sometimes the name will be on the side. So this is one of the older bottles where there's no name written here or the side. Uh, but the real old bottles are non-magnetic caps. This is a magnetic cap, and it's still beautiful. Anyways, um, that's 2008. That's my favorite from 2008. This fruity, woody, frankincense, incense-y, honey, oud. There's the Divana note in here. It's Bertrand du Chafour. But, um, I mean, everyone uh, in the fragrance industry or game or... You know, if you're a frag head like me, you know this fragrance. Uh, Jubilation 25 is absolutely stunning. But if you're new and you want to get into Amouage and you haven't smelled any before, this is the one to start with. For me. Uh, start with this. This might put you off. You know, Lyric Man is going to put you off at first. Unless you're just an out-and-out -out rose lover, um, you know, it's going to put you off. You, that's one you're going to have to work up to. This could be an instant love. An instant love and this could easily be a signature scent for me in the fall um, if I had a signature scent I mean this is one of the few fragrances that I'll actually crave you know I'll come here I'll look at my collection and I will just crave jubilation 25 um, and I mean I've worn it in the Texas heat and even though it's it's really resinous um, the Apopanax, which Apopanax is basically like this sweet, uh, dense, um, myrrh. Okay. So it's like a sweet myrrh. And so sometimes that, that resinous sweetness of the myrrh with the oud, there is oud in this fragrance, um, uh, and clove. And there's a bay leaf note too that mixes with the cinnamon and you can pick it out. I mean, it's, if your nose is a little bit experienced, you'll be able to pick out that bay leaf. Um, I think it's absolutely stunning and I have to give the bottle props too because I dropped this bottle. Look at that. I dropped the bottle and it said, I don't care. And it just keeps on plugging along. No problems. You got to give it to the quality of these bottles. Look at the back. It's just, it's all crooked. Doesn't matter. Still sprays, still works. Um, so there you go. 2008 in a nutshell. Hope you guys appreciate the video. Thank you for all of the support, the likes, the subscriptions always help the channel uh, and it helps our little tribe and community grow. I love it when I get messages from people that say, hey, I just stumbled across your channel. Where in the world have you been? You know, that's that's I love that. Um, and I'm trying to kind of go slow and steady. I want to organically grow the channel. Um, I want people who are like us, you know, to find us, to find our channel and to, you know, join in in our little group. Uh, I want people passionate about fragrances to be here. And so, you know, I think we're on the right path. But the comments, you know, the back and forth, how people grow together uh, in knowledge and in understanding of the fragrances we love and each other is kind of what this channel is all about. So uh, thank you, everybody. I really do appreciate you watching. And I'll hopefully see you again tomorrow with another video. Cheers, guys.